Hello, my name is Mark Periello. I'm the president here at the Kauai Chamber of Commerce. We are sitting down with Mason Chalk today, who is running for re-election to the Kauai County Council. Uh, thanks for being with us today, Mason. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. So if you don't mind, we'll hop right into the questions. Yeah, absolutely. So the first one is a real softball. Tell us about yourself okay. and why you're running for re-election. Sure. I'm Mason Chalk. Uh, I told a bunch of teacher, retired teachers this morning, uh, uh, Dr. Ayu uh, delivered me here on Kauai in 1971. So I've been here for about 47 years on Kauai. And um, just a little bit about myself, you know, uh, Went to school here up until about middle school and then on Oahu uh, at Kamehameha Schools and graduated later at the University of Hawaii Manoa in business and returned here uh, with the family uh, to become a firefighter. And I was a firefighter for about 12 years and um, I was in a helicopter crash in uh, 2001, which kind of changed my life, shifted my pathway and uh, essentially gave me the opportunity to reevaluate how I'd be serving the community. And um, so because of it, I got involved with a lot of uh, Native Hawaiian programming, uh, organizations, education. I uh, built a challenge ropes course in 1999 uh, for at-risk youth. In fact, I ran a, a grant for children of prisoners for, through a mentoring program for about eight years and multiple programs thereafter. So I've been in the community uh, ever since and uh, helped to start an organization called Leadership Kauai and was the executive director of Leadership Kauai for about five years, and started to ask my own leadership questions about how it is we would make systemic change on Kauai. And one of the fundamental principles of, of leadership is that everyone leads, everyone has this kuleana. And so the question about how it is we get this language of leadership into our systems where it was really important for me, and so I left that organization, and I integrated into three different areas, which is what I continue to do today. Mm -hmm. And one of those areas is in education, of which I have done a lot of work in integrating our leadership uh, program into the school systems. I'm pr proud to say after our five years in Kapaa High School, uh, we had the first 100% uh, graduation rate um, after our program started there. And then we, uh, I also focus in on uh, business. Um, so I do a lot of uh, corporate work. I, I work with all of our, our organizations on Kauai. And then lastly, I also have shifted and looked at government. So when the opportunity came to serve government, my interest has always been to serve, not only to uh, try and address the, the issues and look at how we can do better for the future of Kauai, but also to model behaviors around the council with our administration to get the best decisions possible made for our island. And that requires um, being clear about what our priorities are, uh, being able to provide the space for us to have a healthy conflict so that, uh, again, the process delivers the best outcomes we can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. So that's where I am today. I've been on the council for about five years now. I am currently the planning chairman uh, seeking re-election and uh, excited uh, for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Mark, again, and the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, great. Um, thank you, Mason. So the next set of questions have to deal with the business climate here on the island. Um, Hawaii traditionally is ranked as one of the most difficult places to do business in the United States. How can you use the power of your office to help remedy that and make it a little bit easier for people to open, own, and operate a business here on Kauai? Mm -hmm. Thanks. I think the county can, can do a lot. You know, our Office of Economic Development, I think, has really tried to partner within the community, within agriculture. We must do a better job there um, in providing uh, opportunities for our farmers to not only, um, you know, look at tax incentives, which is probably the first go-to thing for, for any uh, politician to look at how it is we can uh, support the financial needs of, of any businesses, including agriculture, but also as all of us are faced with housing. Um, and I think that for, for farmers particularly, uh, housing is an issue because they need to be on their farm. They need to, uh, for security reasons, be there and for uh, financial reasons, be there. Um, so, so we need to encourage that. That's part of what I've worked on in the past in trying to get farm worker housing moving. Um, we opened some of the gates for it, but we understand that there's also some challenges with it and finding that balance. Ultimately, uh, I think, Part of how it leads back to what I focus on with leadership development is looking at education mm -hmm. as, a, as a means of expanding entrepreneurship. 
So the idea of leadership, which is really key here, because what we're looking for is self-directed leaders, people who can adapt. The truth is, we don't know what the jobs are in the future. Uh, we'll be making them up as we go, as, as our next generation moves into um, looking at what the needs are of the world now that it's a global economy. So how do we do that uh, is really, to me, the best way is to equip our, our people. And that's from our students from the time they're born until the time they get into a job and own a business mm -hmm. with the tools necessary to be able to adapt and, be, and, and realign as necessary to be successful. Obviously, uh, with the Office of Economic Development, there's more need to input and uh, uh, some funding that will help organizations like the Kauai Film here mm -hmm. uh, industry. But these are all emerging, emerging industries that we need to diversify on Kauai. We haven't done a good job of that. I believe that uh, we need to, as a county, because we're at the local level, support those who are looking actively to, to uh, build a company. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to any, any business, any person who's wanting to do something different and expand either within our tech industry, because we are still in the center of, of, uh, of uh, the Pacific here. I think we, we, we are, we're, can represent the whole world really well here uh, in our ag uh, industry, because it is really the truth is it's, that's the only way we're gonna preserve our rural culture uh, and lifestyle here. And then also how it is we, we actually connect that to um, how we, how we uh, like in the tourist, tourist industry, how does we connect that to the values that are important for us, right? And I think that's really what the focus has been for us uh, at the council. How do we balance tourism uh, so that it's productive, but it still provides the kind of lifestyle that we all cherish here on Kauai? All right, great. Thank you, Mason. So you touched on this a little bit. Um, so if you have more to add, that's wonderful. And if not, we can go to the next question. But a big issue for the businesses here on Kauai is housing. Mm -hmm. A lot of businesses report that they have difficulty finding and retaining employees because of the cost of homes and rentals here on Kauai. Mm -hmm. um, how would you address this or how have you addressed this um, while you've been on council? Thanks. Yeah, as the planning uh, committee chair, I've been really focused on you know, not only how we grow uh, and how, how we provide access uh, to services, particularly in housing, but also how it is, um, you know, we uh, create opportunities. So the uh, additional rental unit was one uh, opportunity that I, I uh, or bill that was passed recently for an island-wide uh, approach to building houses and building houses that are affordable. Uh, so, so what it allows is the, the entitlement for us to expand on existing units here. So housing is, is probably the biggest issue that we have as it relates to the high cost of living here in, in Hawaii. And I think that it's gonna be achieved multiple ways, all right, for us. One, as I've just discussed, planning for the future. If we make, housing will become cheaper for us if one, we plan properly and where we plan according to our infrastructure. The county's role, in my opinion, is to provide that infrastructure. That's where we can actually uh, decrease the cost of housing significantly. The county doesn't have so much uh, property, land to develop, but we can partner with the state of Hawaii to look at where it is we need that housing and, and then build that housing. But we can, uh, at the county level, look at water, look at wastewater, and develop those things. As it is now, anyone who wants to build a home, it costs just out the door to look at a, at a septic system, $30,000 with, with the water uh, meter, $30,000, expensive. All right, how do we as the county help to subsidize those, those costs? And with the water uh, department and our, our water board, um, we can plan on those things. And we have, through the ARU, we've actually created some incentives for it. And so we need to continue that. We need a, uh, to let, look at our comprehensive zoning ordinance and reframe it mm -hmm. so that uh, the kind of housing that's affordable for us to build can happen and multiply. Um, also, the affordable housing ordinance needs to be changed as well. Uh, how much uh, inclusionary zoning uh, is in, you know, looked at and, and the percentages there. Uh, we need to make it a little bit easier for developers to want to come back to Kauai and, and develop. And we need to be clear about where it is we want to um, because it's not just numbers that we're talking about, but it's, it's the kind of housing right, mm. uh, that we develop for that, so that local residents actually have the opportunity to build, uh, own a house. And so um, you know, we've got, um, we've got a, a a big, um, you know, a lot to focus on with, as it relates to transportation, as it relates to access and so forth. 
but um, you know the housing agencies has a limited capacity so I think that um, to give them the tools which is funding uh, through uh, the housing revolving uh, fund is going to be key and that's something that I think we can look at we're going to be looking at right away here before even before the terms end here mm -hmm. how we increase that revolving fund uh, so that we can focus money on infrastructure focus money on transportation the three percent um, you know GET is also going through to, to that transportation which is so key yeah. so it's it's all tied together and multifaceted so you can't answer that question you know solely right. so it's a real difficult one yeah yeah um, I appreciate that so one last question um, specifically related to businesses here on Kauai um, is about the minimum wage uh, depending on who you talk to minimum increasing the minimum wage will either lead to increased economic activity and job growth um, or it might do the exact opposite, right? And lead to small businesses laying people off mm -hmm. um, and ultimately leading to increased poverty. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think the impact of increasing the minimum wage to mm -hmm. $15 an hour mm -hmm. would be? Well, it's no surprise if you go back to the records, you'll see where I voted on this because it was uh, a resolution that was at the, at the uh, council, not this past term, but the previous term, um, where we asked for increase of, of, of uh, minimum wage. And I think it might have passed. I can't recall right off the top of my head. It did. Um, yeah. However, I, you know, when you, going back to sort of my leadership uh, mindset, you know, I'm, I believe that good change, sustainable change, occurs with incremental uh, small wins. All right. And so when it comes to um, increasing the minimum wage, I think we need to look at it incrementally. Yes, we need a better living wage because we know that in order for this economy, we need to be at thirty-one, thirty-two dollars. All right, an hour. We're not there. The state of Hawaii has already moved in that direction to increase it incrementally, and so I support that. Where that ends, I hope eventually, when it fits, we'll be at the $15 range, maybe even more. But we need to all move and change together. Is my is my uh, message, and so to I think that when we go too far too fast, that's when we start to feel and and you know the. Uh, detrimental outcome or, or unintended consequences of such a measure. Um, I propose within the, uh, that resolution, now that I recall, can, can recall, was a tiered approach so that different organ companies would be paying different scales um, because they can afford it. I mean, that's what we need to look at, right? I mean, nothing is, is equal, and we know that the haves and the have-nots, the gaps of that has increased significantly. So those who can, should and can't afford it, should. We need to preserve our mom and pop uh, stores. We need to preserve uh, business, local business. Mm -hmm. So we gotta find that balance. So I am supportive of it. How, I, how that process is out probably differs from uh, the one-two punch on this. All right, all right, thank you, Mason. So a uh, couple more questions. Um, the first one is about the county budget. Where do you think the county is spending too much money and where do you think we are not spending enough? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I got to tell you, after five years of being on a council, when I got onto the council, I can tell you we were really sort of operating in the red. It's been an uphill climb since I've been there. And I'm, I feel like we're finally at a, a place where, uh, where at least we have a, a budget strategy. We have some uh, budget ordinance in place where it gives us some what we want to preserve. Um, the, where, where we've struggled the most in, in that budget annually and making decisions is this annual on ongoing increase mm -hmm. uh, of um, uh, salaries. And of course, a lot of that is, uh, is due to collective bargaining. The council doesn't really have a say in that. It's a, it's, it happens uh, from one representative from each of the counties and then at the state level. That being said, even within that scheme and, uh, of, of, of collective bargaining, there's imbalance. For instance, uh, if you look at our at our uh, budget increases in, when it comes to salary increases, majority of it has come from our public safety arena, and so we really need to work with those unions to 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 manage that, understanding that there's an end in you know that a cap to this that we have to look at. So those things are sort of we're subjected to at the county level. I think that in order for us to have a better voice in that process is key. So we need to legislate to have that voice. Why not at the local level, we have, instead of one, as opposed to the governor, four votes on that, that we're a part of that active process. So that 
at least we can understand from a council level and from an administration level why we need these increases because we don't know what we don't know. So I think that that is an area that will be on an ongoing conversation for us at the council that we need to continue to look at in balancing the budget because it, we go up in like eight million in a, in a, in a breath you know in one budget uh, just to try and come up with that funding on an annual basis is incredibly difficult. Mm. All right, and so that we can actually give it to the community and to support some of the infrastructure, parks, everything else that we need. So, um, you know. I know that there are a lot of people that talk about waste at the count at the county level. Um, I'd say it happens here and there, but I think that we've really done a good job at trying to, um, you know, utilize the budget that we have and do the do more with what we have, uh, do less, do more with less. And and what it comes down to me from my uh, frame of mind is uh, human building human capacity. Human capital is really what's key. So um, how you know people need to be inspired, yeah, and motivated mm -hmm. to do more in the community. We're in a customer service business, right? And oftentimes, in any organization, any company, you know that that kind of goes to the wayside. If you every day you're getting pounded on by the community, why not this? Why don't we have this? You know, get better at this and so forth. And and so to find that motivation and key and understanding about what our role is there is really key. And I think that that comes through cultural change. Culture shift at the at the organizational level. How do we become a healthy organization? And I think it requires us to plan for that. So when our priorities are clear, this is what we can accomplish in two years and get it done, and are held accountable to it. The, ha the people are happy. All right, they they don't mind giving us money because they see a product being delivered, and that's how we should be running this organization like a business. All right, uh, thank you, Mason. Yeah. So um, the next question is about tourism. Um, it's impossible to probably have a conversation about elected office here on Kauai and not talk about tourism. Um, in many respects, we are so dependent on tourism um, for uh, really to drive the economy. Um, the tourist industry from 2017 to 2016 increased from 1.6 billion in spending to 1.8 billion, a 9.6 percent increase, and all indicators are that tourism is projected to grow in the future. Mm -hmm. um, we benefit from that in many ways, mm -hmm. right? In terms of the taxes that is, are generated, the jobs that are created, um, and in terms of the give back that the industry gives to the community through the charity walk and other events. But conversely, we have an aging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so it leads to congestion on our streets, overcrowding at popular tourist destinations, um, and really a lot of our businesses are struggling to keep up with demands for their products and services mm -hmm. because of um, how busy we are mm -hmm. um, in the tourist sector. What can you do to help mitigate the growth, or mitigate's the wrong word, but help um, sort of manage the growth of the tourist industry um, in the future? Yeah, thank you for the question. I, you know, tourism isn't going anywhere because it's our number one bread and butter, right? And yet, um, I think that anywhere, any, local person that lives on Kauai you talk to will say enough is enough and that we're at capacity and even I think in the paper yesterday it talked about us recognizing even at the tourist industry level that we might be at capacity here and that we need to adjust and it's really an important question because people come here specific I mean we all live here because of the lifestyle because of the beauty of this place right and, and the environment the pristine environment that we live in and they want to come to this place for that experience and so it behooves us to preserve that and so how do we balance this manage this this resource in a way that that honors our people and honors the visitors that come here because if we exploit it as we've seen in many other locations around the world we can become the last place on the on earth that people want to come to and so i think it's an important question um, what can we do here uh, at the county level is look at you know, helping to support the tourism strategic plan and how we find those balances, really get people in the room to sit down how it is we're going to do those things. I've been really focused on this because, <clears throat> like I said before, sort of in my interest of the environment, the preservation of environment, um, and through Native Hawaiian education, is to look at, because people come and they want to hear and learn about the culture, is establishing very, not only tangible, but authentic experiences that supports preservation of the environment. I've been um, pretty active in establishing stewardship programs. I, I am 
very supportive of what the mayor has done with his stewardship programs. And I want to see that continue. But I also wanted to see it translate into the workforce development. I want to see it translate into how it is engages with the uh, hotel industry, with the visitors industry, so that when they come here, <coughs> they're actually um, going back to that idea for, from that Native Hawaiian perspective that we leave this place better than it was. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's possible if we engage them with that, that mindset, if we engage them with the thought that um, they should be giving back to this place. Um, it it'll take time. Um, definitely, I think that on a local level, we need more uh, control and say over what it is, um, you know, how many seats on the airplane should be here mm -hmm. so that we can manage this properly and have more say in the process of, you know, when it's time to expand. We do in terms of zoning, and, and that's why the planning, uh, the general plan is so important about where we want this activity and where we don't want it. And which brings up, you know, uh, things that have, are out of sync, like the transit vacation rental mm -hmm. um, industry, as it relates to the tourism industry, it's been an issue for us. It's taken housing away from us on this island. And I've been integral in trying to, you know, find that balance through, um, in fact, this past uh, uh, budget, we actually spent a lot of time Council member uh, Derek uh, uh, Kawakami and I were able to pass uh, some legislation. So really, find that, start to find that balance, and then take it, take that funding, and actually utilize it for long-term um, housing needs. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. You know, at the policy level, I think one home rule is important. I think that we need to look at the things that are exasperating our housing market mm -hmm. and the experiences that our locals are receiving on a daily basis. And then also finding avenues so that it can be more of an educational, eco-friendly uh, experience when people come here. All right, thank you, Mason. And so last question, is there anything else you would like to share with our viewers today? Well, you know, I, I think it's an exciting time, you know, for Koi. And, and as much as the challenges have been um, very prevalent and in our face, I think it's at those times that hu the human race actually responds. All right. and, and we're not the only ones. We're seeing a housing issue, housing crisis across the world. We're seeing our roads across the country in issue. Um, finding balance. I mean, the truth is we're growing from the inside out and everywhere across, and then balancing our industry and our, and our businesses with that so that they can thrive and, and we can live in this world of abundance, which is truly what I believe Kauai can represent. The reason why I'm so excited is because I mean, things can go one way or another here. We got a new mayor coming on board. We've got three new council members that will be on board at least, right? You could have a whole new seven new council members, but you're gonna see a lot of change occur. The opportunity will be there for us to really uh, dive deep into some of these partnerships. Mm -hmm. I'm all about collaboration and, um, and partnership. And I think that that's what it's gonna take from the state, from the county, from private industry, in order to get the kind of outcomes. We all, I say we all, always say we want the same things for Kauai, but how we get there is really different. That cannot happen any longer. We need to get together. We need to be together in the room and make some very hard decisions about what we're gonna invest in together, all right, in order for our community to thrive. And so I wanna be a part of that discussion again. So if uh, people you know, see that the work I've done in five years has been uh, contributive, that I've held space for us to, to have healthy discussions, then I'll ask that you continue to select me as a leader at the county council level. Um, I couldn't get as much as I wanted to in the amount of time we have, but I, uh, so that people, if you have in, uh, some interest in understanding who I am, what I've done, what I've supported, what I haven't supported, and what I intend to do and focus on in the next term, please visit my website. It's Mason, M-A-S-O-N, the number four, kawaii.org, and look at my progress report because it's uh, intensive and very specific on initiatives that we can and will if I'm elected, look at. All right, great. Um, thank you, Mason. So again, we're here today with Mason Chalk running for re-election uh, to Kauai County Council. Thank you for your time. Right on, Mark. Thank yeah. you. Cool.